Okay, guys, we're over here in the potato patch. Uh, as you can see right here where I'm at, this place holds water now that it's been raining so much. Even though we put our potatoes up on beds, it's just too wet. The, uh, the plants are just dying. They're, uh, they're just rotting. And if we're going to get any kind of potatoes out of here, we, if there's anything left, let me put it that way, we don't know yet. We're going to dig down because I see fire ants everywhere. I'm going to show you something else I see. These are called cut worms. These are called cut worms. They're actually, when the potato plant starts dying, they're actually in it trying to eat the potato plant off. They're actually cutting it up and eating it. I'm noticing it around every one of my potato plants that are dead. If I shake them, usually there's a cut worm. Matter of fact, I feel one of these worms biting me in my finger right now, actually chewing in my finger, I mean my palm of my hand just a little bit. So another culprit on the homestead uh, once a potato plant's wilt over from dying from the uh, too much water, these worms are moving in trying to actually cut and eat up the plants. These are the same exact worms that eat off tomato plants and plants at the ground. When you put them out, they wrap around it, literally cut them off, kill the plant. Uh, guys, it's like there's a never end to these insects and bugs and worms without using control for chemicals and stuff, but we refuse to do it here at this point. As long as we can stay ahead of them, we're going to keep trying to do it. But now we're going to look and see if there's any potatoes where this plant I just, you know, pulled up was. Because it's a little early, but we're going to try and see. Okay, there's three potatoes, about that size. Now that's a good sized potato. So far we got it just ahead of it blistering from the water or fire ants getting too bad. And I see a couple of fire ant holes in the side of it. But we're gonna to try to get these out before the ants and the water blisters them so that we can have them for the canning class that we have coming up this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time. On Wednesday the 8th, I believe it is. Let me get a bucket out. We've got another plant here. They're just pure slime. I mean, literally slime. Not a bad potato. These are pretty good. These are bigger than what you get in the grocery store. Averaging three to four nice potatoes per plant. I'm actually going to go backwards here because I don't see any plants, but I always like to go backwards just to be sure because I don't remember how far down in here they were planted. Oh, I was right. See, the plants have been dead and gone for a while. We just didn't realize it. Guys, if you're going to dig potatoes, I highly encourage using a potato fork because that is the way it's intended to be done. It's the right way to do it. You shouldn't use a shovel because a shovel will just whack them in half and cut them in pieces and stuff. If you watch what you're doing with a potato fork and stay far enough away from the plant, you can actually stick it in the ground and sift the dirt through it. Now this dirt's kind of heavy and kind of wet, but you can see, see how I do that and the potato just come right to the top. Makes it easy to turn the soil over. We must have planted potatoes further back this way than I thought. They've just been dead for a while. So you can shake that ground and look at this. 
These potatoes just roll right out. You see me going along, I'm actually killing them cutworms as I go. I'm mashing them in my finger. Because I see them fall out. Just trying to get rid of them. Guys, when it comes to gardening, having the right tools makes all the difference in the world. Now, these are nice potatoes, really good potatoes. And might I add, back in the day, they may no older than I am. Used to, you walk the garden every day. If you saw bugs, just handpicked them. Now, I remember my daddy talking about sharecropping, him and his mom, my grandfather. They would put arsenic in women's, they called them step-ins, and they would go down through the garden and they would just kind of shake it, and they would put arsenic on top of all the plants because that's what people did back then. They didn't think anything about chemicals. They, they did that to control uh, the boll weevil, to control potato beetles, and things like that, and to them, it was nothing. And as a matter of fact, the agriculture department pushed that kind of stuff back when my dad was a kid. And we grew up not thinking anything about it, and it wasn't until here just a few years ago that actually cancer became so prevalent, and we realized that a lot of the problems in this country stem from what happened back then with the use of chemicals. Okay, guys, we're just going to go through the field now. This end here just happened to be wetter and holding water, and a lot of plants died. We're going to go through now, and we're going to pick out all the plants that have just died in the field, because once they go away, we have no idea where the potatoes are at. So that's what we're going to do now. And right here, we have one that has died, so we're going to try to get it next. Sticker weeds out of here. Ooh, look at that one there. Look at that. Now that is a nice potato. But you see what's happened to the plant. It's just dying. It's been eat off at the ground. Look at this. Ooh, man. Talk about some beautiful potatoes. Yeah, there's another one. Look at that. Big as a palm of my hand. Grocery store ain't got nothing on them potatoes. These ain't got no sprout dip on them. Nothing like that. Just good old homegrown potatoes. And that's all of that one. Now we have one behind it here that's also dying. And I'm guessing that it has a lot to do with the wetness because right in here that you can see where it holds water. A lot of these are dying. Even though we have these up on a bed, it's still uh, it, it's still just too wet for them. Now this one here is covered up in fire ants before I ever dig it. I want you to see if I can get it pulled back. You see those fire ants? They come to these stems and they eat them off like this. When they start souring, all that juice running out of it, those fire ants come to that and then they go down to the potatoes and they start eating your potatoes. Now let's just see what we got under this one. Look at that. Boy, that's, that's nice potatoes there. Look at that. And might I add, too, you want to be careful when you're handling these potatoes. You don't want to just throw them in the bucket. Because if you bruise them now, they will rot later. So that, that's just like any other fruit or vegetable. You don't want to bruise up anything. You want to handle it kind of easy. 
And then we've got, oh, there's another one thrown in there. Look at that. That one's just kind of growing out to the side. Got one little old plant left here. It ain't doing too good. We're going to see if there's anything under it. Just go ahead and get it out because there ain't no need leaving it. This ground is really wet for sandy soil. I can tell you that. All right, we're going to hunt the rest of the plants in the field that are dying, and we're going to go ahead and get them out of here while we can. All right, we got another one here. We're going to see what we can. I see one potato already there. And you can't just kind of shake it a little bit ground so wet that the dirt ain't just falling off look at that guys that's what you call potatoes I always like to make sure I didn't leave nothing behind now one thing you see me doing is you see me taking these plants I get them out of my field and throw them out in the field out here because if there's a cutworm left or if there's disease on it, I don't want it spreading to the rest of the plant. Okay guys, we finished going through the field, digging up plants sporadically. Uh, that's one thing about living in the south. We always say that there's X number of days to maturity. But in the south, you kind of got to play that by ear. You have to look to, like we did. We seen the plants were dying. If we'd have left them in another week, these potatoes would have just been ruined. They'd have been blistered. The ants would have chewed them full of holes. We would have lost them. You have to walk through that field diligently every day. Look at your plants. If you see them starting to die, even though ours never really bloom. The flowers you see out there that's in the potatoes, those are radishes that's, that's blooming. From where we had a cover crop of uh, the tillage radishes that were out there. And we left a few of them to go to seed so we can have them for next year. But as a whole, our potatoes never bloom this year. We don't know if they're going to actually bloom before we have to take them all out. But we do know that we have to go along and we have to get as many of them out of there as we can when we can. Because if we don't, we will lose them in the deep south. Now up north it may be totally different. I'm not sure about that. I only know about right here. Now we have extremely sandy soil. And I think that it's one of the only reasons we're able to salvage as many potatoes as we can is because our soil is so sandy that they don't actually rot that easy here. Now, as promised to y'all, today is May the 5th when we're trying to get these out. Uh, it's a sunny day, well, partly cloudy to sunny, cool day. We have a canning class coming up on May the 8th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you'd like to be a part of that class, send us an email. 
Uh, it's a $10 fee to join. It's a private class. Wanda and I will be teaching you Wednesday night about how we can potatoes. We're going to be canning these potatoes as well as some store-bought potatoes that we've purchased because we realize that not all of y'all are able to grow your own potatoes and that you want to go to the store and buy some potatoes. We'll show you the differences in the way we can them and how it's done and how we preserve them because in the South, even though these are beautiful potatoes, guys, in four months from now, they won't even be edible. They'll be full of sprouts if they have not rotted because of the heat and the humidity. So we can ours in jars. That way we're guaranteed that we're going to have potatoes to eat all year long. Between water, the fire ants, the cutworms, climate change, it's getting to be a hassle just to grow something as simple as Irish potatoes. That's a very easy crop to grow. It's not hard at all but it's getting to be a job, even for us in the deep south. So that's why we're taking you along on our journeys about what we do and how we do it, as we promised. We'll show you how we harvest and why we harvest the way we do. Guys, one reason we do this is that it we don't have to harvest this field all at once. Now, we have the plows to go through here and actually plow this whole field when it gets to be time and take these potatoes out. But we choose not to do that. We choose to dig ours by hand with a potato fork a little bit at a time so that we're guaranteed not to lose them. We don't bruise them. We don't cut them up bad or anything like that. It just makes it where we at, we're able to actually harvest more potatoes. Now, what we probably have here today, I'm going to have to guess at it because I don't have any scales here, but I know one of these buckets, how much it weighs full of potatoes. We're probably about 25 pounds of potatoes here. Could be a little more, but I'm going to take 25 because it's a little on the low side. So we're going to try to keep up this year with how many potatoes we harvested off this field. We bought a 50 pound bag. We cut them up in pieces. We uh, let them cure and we planted them. We're going to see this year how many potatoes that produces for us. Usually we get between 400 and 450 pounds of uh, potatoes. That's what one and I need to make it through a year and have a few left over for the next year, just in case we have a crop failure. So that's what we're shooting for this year, is 400 to 450 pounds. And go along with us, keep up with the poundage, and we're going to keep up with it, and we're going to see if we meet our quota this year. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.